say to uh, last, I think it was last Sunday, um, I think it was uh, Curtis and uh, Mike come up to mom and I tell you what, we had one wonderful fellowship that day. And I'm just, you know, that's how the Lord works and here he is with me this morning. And I just you know, praise the Lord for him. He's a wonderful brother in Christ. But number one, I have some kind of some odd verses here, but you know what? I just, I'm going to give it to you like the Lord gave it to me the five reasons, and this is how the first one goes, and if you want to, I will tell you what, write these verses down, because the Word of God is powerful, you know, and it always, it always has an effect on each and every one of us. This first verse was probably, I'm guessing probably 30 years ago or so, I heard it, you might think, why is that verse, but I'll read it to you, Proverbs 15, 3, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch upon the evil and the good. You think, well, why is that verse good to you or personal to you? But to me, I think when you're, you know, whatever I was, 14, 16 years old, somewhere in there, and I heard that verse, I was thinking, I don't know, I don't want him to see my my evil. He can see my good, but I don't want him to see the evil. Yeah. You know, so to me, it's a wake up that, you know, he sees it all, and he sees it all because he loves you. You know, so as you grow in the Lord, you know, that verse is really is liberating because you have nothing to hide from him. You know, because if he sees it all, just bear it all up to him and throw it at his feet, you know. And he sees the good too. We just have to focus on the bad. He sees the good too and he, and he you know, he takes his servants, takes his sons and daughters and he blesses them, you know, and does many good things for them. And I might add that this, after I got this done, that it's always, it seems like it always is, uh, this is the gospel that I have here. After you look at the five, it's the gospel in a nutshell. It always is, it seems like. But praise the Lord, he sees the evil and the good. There's nothing that's kept from him. For my second one, I had provider, and that's pretty much close to like I was going to give you guys a call after I left. I gave my boss a call. I had a little run in with the boss and I got the <coughs> job back and all that. He's not in great shape either. And I'm always thinking that the Lord's my provider. He'll provide a way out of everything I ever get into. He'll provide a way for my my escape. That's what you need to do. 
I don't look at as a next case will provide a way for my acceptance of all these things that come my way. And uh, I guess in that, that same prayer, you provide us the table before me in the presence of my enemies. And uh, I guess that's why we should always pray for our enemies. You never know who you will be with, I guess. And I, but, uh, thank God. That, I guess that's just that. Thank God he provides for me and everything provides the like he spoke of the lilies of the valley, how even Solomon and all of his array wasn't provided like they were even for their own clothing. And uh, I always trust in the Lord on that, that uh, whenever I'm whining around, I can always be reassured that he'll provide me what I need, not necessarily what I want, but That's what right. I need. My second one is uh, Praise the Lord. My second one is uh, is in Ezekiel chapter eleven, uh, verse nineteen. And I think about that song. Uh, I think me and my brother sang it years ago in the fire hall. I have no piano or anything. We just sang it a cappella. And uh, the song is uh, it took a miracle. And this verse kind of deals with that a little bit because I think a man, you know, as Drew was testifying this morning that, you know, he's born to sin. Uh, that's just in his nature. And you ain't going to do nothing about it yourself. Um, and the Bible says the heart is deceitful all above all and desperately wicked. And I tell you what, uh, that's a pretty bad thing. You know, a thing for a person because it's deceitful. I think to myself, I think I can look and even say that for sure that that heart can even trick one's own self. You know, so this verse uh, uh, kind of deals with that. Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 18 and 19. And they shall come thither and they shall take away all the detestable things thereof and all the abominations thereof from thence. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and will give them a heart of flesh. And to me, that's a miracle, because we do have stony hearts before we come to the Lord. But he performs that surgery, that operation, in each and every one of us. And that's, you can't get more special than that to me. third one is, is a, a constant companion. In fact, the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, I was reading the almanac that these guys, the shepherds in England, a long time ago, or if they still do it, or buried with a tuft of wool in their hands to show St. Peter when they get to heaven. That's why they couldn't make it to church. On Sundays, they were taking care of their sheep. I don't know if that worked or not, but it just it dawned on me that he's my shepherd, and the shepherd's always your constant companion if you're a sheep. So I'm just great that I was one of them, and especially a lost one, because I was one that he really kept looking for. <laughs> Thank you. I was thinking this morning, uh, and I'm just going to use a couple of examples. So I'm gonna, I guess I'm, I'm going to pick on him, I guess. But I'm not really picking on you. I'll use Curtis and Rob as an example. <coughs> I was going to ask them this morning if they know how I feel uh, and how my feelings are because I don't have no hair up here, too much hair. Do you know how I feel? You don't, do you? No, because that hasn't happened to you, has it? <laughs> well, you know, in order for somebody to be uh, empathetic with you, um, you know, they have to go through them, some things. And God in heaven, you know, he, he just didn't say, you know, I'm going to provide you with this. If you just accept me, I'll, I'll, I'll take it and you'll be saved. Um, 
the gospel is so clear in that what he did for us. It's wonderful. And I just want to read uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17 and 18. And, you know, I, I love the King James and I love the Amplified both, but in this case, the Amplified says it so clear to me. Just remember this, what he did uh, for you, and that he's an empathetic and close high priest, the Bible says. So it is evident that he was essential, that he be made like his brethren in every respect, in order that he might become a merciful, sympathetic, and faithful high priest in the things related to God, to make atonement and propitiation for the people's sins. For because he himself, in his humanity, he was a man, the Bible says. He was God, but he was a man. Has suffered in being tempted, tested, and tried. He is able immediately to run to the cry of assist, relieve those who are being tempted and tested and tried and who are therefore are being exposed to suffering. You just can't, you can't say that he doesn't know or he doesn't feel because this, this verse right here tells you he was made just like us. He had things in his mind, you know, in his body that he probably wanted to do, but he didn't sin, the Bible says. He walked without sin. He walked the walk and talked the talk. You know what? But even more than that, I mean, maybe not more, but just as much as he knows your heart and your mind. He knows everything about you. He knows everything about me. And we can bring it to him. And he says, yes, I know. I know. Praise the Lord. I was right out in line, too. I said, he's my counselor. And uh, he seems to always counsel me whenever I'm saying, why does this have to happen? Why do I got to do this or that? And he said, because, we, you know, not only I said so, but uh, you got to do this because uh, why do these things bother you? Why do certain things bother you? Is because they're tests of mine. They're just things that you got to go through and everybody else has to go through. We don't, get, we don't get here easy. That's right. didn't come on a, no, I didn't give you me on a silver platter. Mm -hmm. I, I had to give you my life and everything for you. Mm -hmm. So uh, you wouldn't have to go through what I've gone through. Yeah. And, uh, you know, anytime you ever have any trouble, if you come to me, and you know, we'll figure it out some way. You're the only way, Lord. So let me my counselor. That's right. He's so crazy. Praise the Lord. My next one is uh, Romans chapter five, uh, verse eight. I think you know uh, this old man or the enemy, whoever it is, always puts thoughts there. And, I've been through, it seems like, all of them, you know, through my life, and and we think, you know, why is God, you know, that he did this, why is it so big for that, you know, he became a man, he was God, but yet he was tempted, he had all of our temptations, all of our trials, and Romans 5, 8 says that he, but God shows and clearly proves his own love for us by the fact that we were still sinners, Christ the Messiah, the anointed one, died for us. And to me, that speaks volumes because, you know, it's something for a man to do something for another man. You know, and the Bible says, you know, if you love one another, you know, what reward, what reward have you if you just love, show the love to those that love you? But when somebody does something to you, if somebody, you know, if I were to take somebody in this front row and just get up and just be little them and just spit in their face and just tell them all kind of manner of, atrocities and terrible things and for them to get up and just hug me and say I love you that's what the Bible says he clearly proves and shows his love because he was on the cross don't forget the people that loved him or thought they loved him when they was going to release Barabbas they said crucify him crucify him 
But yet when he was on the cross, when he thought he was forsaken, the Bible says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He said, Forgive them, for they know, know not what they do. And I'll even put this to you. The Bible says in James, it says, he's talking to the Christians, he says, you're like a uh, wives have an illicit love affair. You go to the world, and then you come back to me. You know, I don't mean to be hard on everybody here or myself, but, you know, that's what the book says. Mm -hmm. But yet he loves us. Mm -hmm. You know, through it all, before we were saved, after we were saved, he's the greatest lover that ever come upon this earth. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> well, I said, oh, my God, he's my friend. Aaron was this little guy and I was having trouble with mom and I was always coming to see him and had to go to the courts and all that. And Aaron told me, he said, well, I'll tell that judge that you're my, you're not only my dad, you're my friend. And I thought, man, little kid, I mean, he's my friend. Wow. And he'll lay that right into this magistrate's face and I, all right, I tell you, that gave me all the power I ever needed to ever go up before any kind of principality uh, there ever was. And uh, I was thinking that Jesus, that, you know, we're just talking, took his blood and his body that he gave us. That's what a friend we have in Jesus. And I also got three blanks. Wife track also said that he's also the most holiest relative I got. Praise <laughs> God. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> my last one is the first thing. I kind of have these in order. I guess it's just looking at the cross. But the last one I think you probably just use day in and day out, whether you're just a six months Christian or a 90 year Christian. This is Hebrews. Uh, and it's been used before, but that's fine. It's great. Use it every day. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and verses 6. It says in the Amplified, Let your character or moral disposition be free from love of money, including greed, avarice, lust, and craving for earthly possessions. And be satisfied with your present circumstances and with what you have. For he, God himself, has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake, nor let you down, relax my hold on you, assuredly not. So we take comfort and are encouraged and confidently and boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be seized with alarm. I will not fear or dread or be terrified. What can man do to me? Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen.